Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. Look at the sun's out. Oh, it's a gorgeous day. First day, technically, of meteorological spring. Meteorological? Talking's hard. Don't know what to say. Out here in my garden, going through my various plants and just going basically over what I need to do for March. I mean, I'm a little bit early on this. A lot of the stuff that I need to get going with probably could wait a good three weeks or so. However, what I'm talking about today, which is enriching the potting media, that's something that can take a few weeks to get going. So I thought, why not just do it now and talk about it in a video? Don't think I've ever really done a video just dedicated to bringing the potting soil back to life. Every spring, one of my chores that I like to get done with my house plants or anything that's in a pot with just a standard potting mix is to come through and add some organics into that soil and help liven it up. There's several reasons to do things like this. I just got like stab myself in the face with a palm frond. I'm gonna do this video from sitting on the ground, keeping it casual. Standard potting mixes are generally considered soilless. If they're peat based or coconut based, there just isn't much going on there organically to help feed the plants. There is for a little while when you first get them because they normally have some continuous resource fertilizers in them. Sometimes they're amended, usually not if you're getting one of the more inexpensive types, which is what I typically do. Usually get the more inexpensive brands and then enrich it myself with compost or whatever I have around to bring life to it. But every single year, that soil is going to become more and more void of nutrients. And there are some plants that we don't need to repot every year, right? The general rule of thumb with house plants usually say every year to every other year, but there are always exceptions. There are plants that like to say, a little bit more root bound that like that tightness in their pot and if you repot them every year wouldn't necessarily be great for them and sometimes overall it just isn't necessary if you have a plant that you just repotted the year before then it's a good idea to enrich that soil the next year because it's probably burnt through a lot of the good stuff that's down there in the soil one of the first things i like to do as part of my spring maintenance and getting things going outside with my potted plants is any oak leaves that are in here I either need to shred them and work them in or pull them out because the oak leaves take a longer time to break down, which can cause the soil to hold on to moisture for longer than I would necessarily want it to, particularly for a plant like this oleander here. It's not going to want to have like waterlogged leaves around everything. Even though this is a great resource for helping to enrich the soil, it would need to be cut up and a lot of stuff added to it to help break it down faster. I don't really feel like doing that right now, so this is going to go into the compost. I'll go ahead and use this pindu palm here as an example. For something like this, I just start simple. I have a bag here with some really nice compost in it, like really good stuff. It's got sand, lots of organic matter, and worm castings, which I also have in a bag over here. But there's already some in here, so I probably don't need to use that. I imagine I will, though. I come through, sprinkle a light layer on the surface of the soil all the way around that root ball. Just a little bit. Doesn't need to be very much. And I suppose since I have the earthworm castings, I can go ahead and use some. I'll go ahead and add a little bit. Not very much, though. And then this is when I would typically add something like um, a Spoma Biotone Starter or Plant Tone Garden Tone any type of organic fertilizer that's really rich with various types of mycorrhiza fungi. I don't have any of those things right now. However, I do have a starter right here, just a culture of all that mycorrhiza. You see all that good stuff there on the label? This stuff right here is chock full of all kinds of great fungus that's going to help break things down. They have a good symbiotic relationship with the roots of the plant and with the soil. Helps with nutrient absorption, water absorption, absorption, water absorption. Essentially it just helps for making a stronger root system and a healthier plant in the long run. And with this and potted plants you only need a very very small amount. I don't know if that's even really going to end up showing on camera. It probably won't. No, you can kind of see that in there. So what that's going to do is help facilitate the breakdown of the compost that I just put in here and those earthworm castings. Then as those things break down, they help release nutrients, help the plant absorb nutrients, all kinds of great things happen. So it's worked into the top of the soil and then it'll get watered in when I water this plant. There are also liquids. I have a liquid one that would work well, could add that to the water. And that's it. I only do that once a year. I do it in the springtime. Sometimes I will do it again with plants that have a lot of annuals in the pots. I'll do that again probably early summer. Potted plants have anything like sweet potatoes, um, petunias, coleus, just nutrient hogs that's going to help get them through the summer. And when it warms up somewhere, I'll add some kelp meal in here. That's going to break down faster and provide more quick results. It's still a slow release, but it's much faster than the actual breakdown of the compost. This is something that provides a slow but steady feed for the plants. Right now, temperatures are 
fairly cool, so this really didn't need to be done just yet, but that process takes usually at least a few weeks to start happening beneath the soil, and it's not going to hurt to go ahead and get these organic fertilizers in there now because they won't get used until the things warm up. It's not going to hurt the plant. Sometimes I will also add rock dust and rock minerals, like I said, just using Biotone Starter, Plant Tone, Garden Tone, any of those organic starter fertilizers. The main thing I look for when buying those different types of fertilizers is a really long extensive list of different bacteria and fungus so that I know that when it gets into that soil it's really going to help encourage nice strong root growth. This isn't something where I'm just blasting the plant with the NPK to get quick growth out of it. This is a long-term thing and it's pretty effective. Helps build nice strong healthy plants and reduces watering too. The more of those root tips you start to get growing the better the water absorption uptake is, and usually the retention too inside the plant. So that's it. Quick, simple, not a lot to it. Like I said, this isn't something that I do with all of my plants. It's really only going to be the plants that have been sitting in the same nursery can or soil for at least a year, and especially plants like palms where they can spend a few years in the same pot, or like um, house plants I'm trying to think of. What would this be? Peperomia obtusifolia. You can keep those in the same nursery can for years, a long, long, long time but that soil is going to become very void of nutrients over time, which for the obtusifolia is probably not that big of a deal. But it's not going to hurt as long as you don't use too much of the compost and you're able to pay attention to the water retention in the pot, it's going to be fine. And with perennial planters, which well, there's nothing to see, everything's still sleeping and looking pretty pathetic right now, but things like my magnolia trees or my hookahs, the paniculata hydrangeas, those I do go a little bit heavier with the compost in those. I'll do, I don't know why I did this, like a quarter inch layer on the top, not a ton, but a larger amount, partially because those are plants that are in gigantic pots, right? I mean, I think one of them's like 36 inches. So we need a lot more supplementation to get down there and get around those roots and keep them well fed throughout the year. So in a nutshell, I'm just trying to kick off the whole entire nitrogen process, the whole nitrogen cycle down there within the pot of the plant. Once things warm up, and I'd say it's steadily in the 70s, and that root zone is right around there in the 70s, that's when things will really start to take effect and things will get start to break down more effectively. When things are cool like they are now, all that stuff's just going to hang out inside the pot. It probably won't start breaking down, at least not very much. Pretty sure I already said all that, just so that you would know that you can do this a little bit earlier and it's going to be okay. In fact, it's better to go a little bit earlier because then you allow the time for things to slowly start to happen down in there. There are tons of different methods for enriching your potting mix this micro risey right here great stuff works wonderfully it's sometimes easier to just get that in a pelleted version like with the biotone starter or any starter fertilizer but if you don't have any of that around this is good and a little bit goes a really long way i think the box actually said for a potted plant let me look just to be sure just says if you're using this in potting soil to use two tablespoons for a 1.5 cubic bag and that's i mean you saw i just put a sprinkle of compost in here it's really just a light sprinkle that's all it needs. I don't have any brands that I really recommend. I haven't found any that like blow my mind over the others, but this is Rootweb from uh, Bounty, T-E-A. Use it for a while and it's always worked really well. Wow, the shadows. That's the joys of filming without clouds. No clouds. No clouds and lots and lots of shadows. That tea part on the label does remind me though that compost tea also works wonderfully. If you know how to do that and that's something you enjoy doing, then giving the plant a nice watering with a compost tea helps bring that life back into the potting mix. Works wonders. There are tons of different things you can do to help enrich your soil. This is just my quick and easy, when you got a lot of plants, I don't like to overcomplicate it kind of way to get it done. There's all types of fun rock minerals and things like that, dust and powders that can be mixed into the soil blends. The compost tea, like I mentioned, in larger pots, sometimes I'll just add earthworms directly into them, but it needs to be a nice big pot. Like the ones, like I was saying before, like my magnolias and hydrangeas, those are in like 30 inch to 36 inch pots. Those have a nice big massive area for those worms to go around and live their life and get work done. I don't really think there's enough what would it be called biomass in here to support much of a worm culture at least not in a palm that's been potted in the same pot for a couple of years because as you know that's going to be a lot of roots in here and nowhere near as much soil as when it's freshly been repotted. I've had this for a while. I don't know if they still make it. If they do, I'll try and find a link and put it down in the description. But really, any type of mycorrhizae supplement you can find that has a nice, long, extensive list is a good way to go. You don't want the list to be too short. Generally, the longer the list, the better, because not all of them are going to serve a purpose and work properly, and certain plants will utilize things in different ways. So that way, you're at least guaranteed to get a good amount of something that's going to work. Mycorrhizae, that's a whole, like, a whole another video. It's a complex subject. A fun one, but 
complex. And pardon the view, you know, it was pretty cold here. Things are looking pretty shabby. Oh, my fall planters. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. What are some things that you do? If you have any fun methods or hacks to help liven up your soil, eggshells, banana peels, all those fun things. All right, I'm going to go through, finish this up in my pots, and hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. Oh, those shadows. Bye-bye. <laughs>